ladies and gentlemen, Scare Act Appreciation Month has been a blast so far, but today I want to just review the event as a whole. I'm talking mazes, scare zones, the experiences, and what no other way to do that properly than with my friends from the Knots Network, Mary and Tim. How are you guys doing today? We're doing great. How We're doing are you? Awesome. Oh, I am just I am stoked to be here. I'm stoked to be talking with you guys. I mean Thanks I, for having us on. We're so excited. Oh, when I when I knew I wanted to do this podcast, I was like, there's no other people to do it better with than the Knots Network themselves. I mean, it's <laughs> it makes the most sense right there. I mean, we gotta break down this event and see what's going down. <laughs> Um, yeah, there was a lot of fun this year. I mean, some stuff left us for for getting ready for the fiftieth. There's gonna be some new stuff coming in. Um, oh yeah, and we're just gonna break down mazes, scare zones, uh, different experiences they offered this year, uh, all that fun stuff. So I think we should just dive in with kind of just the overall like our, our thoughts just going in this year. I mean, I, I have to say, 2022 across the board, haunts were just phenomenal this year. Oh yeah, everyone was kicking ass this year. Yeah, totally. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like it, it was like twenty twenty one was kind of like our test year to see if they could still do this in a in a post pandemic world. Then twenty twenty two was the official like we're back. This is it. Yes, we are yes. in a hundred percent. We are we're giving it all. Um, oh, yeah. The energy at knots this year, unreal. Um, oh yeah. Scare zones were great. Mazes were great. Um, new experiences like behind the fog tour, amazing. Um, the buffet. One of my favorites. Amazing this year. Like, everything was just overall a really fun time and just it felt it felt normal again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It just, totally. It felt right. So my first question for you guys was, uh, you know, compared to like, you know, in a, in a post um, kind of more COVID uh, pandemic world now, where do you do, what did you think about this year? What was your overall thoughts? Like, what did you guys just going into this year? Were you like excited? How did you guys feel going into this year? Honestly, I was super excited, especially with two new mazes, like two new mazes, like ah, double, double the fun. And then, um, and I, it honestly, after I know you said 2021 was more of everybody getting back in the groove. I felt like, like, how do I best explain it then? It felt, it, it whenever Scary Farm comes back, it feels like coming home, you know? Oh, yeah. It's not like a, oh, uh, I hope it's better this year, you know? Yeah. It, it, I don't feel that way. I feel like I'm always excited to come back to Scary Farm because coming back to Scary Farm is coming back home. And it, the event will be different from year to year. And you know what? It's how the event changes is what gets me excited because it's like, oh, new additions or and um new new characters new monsters and um seeing how the event evolves and changes over the years oh 100 percent. what about you tim what do you think about going into this year um i was just excited to get right back into it again it's like i mean the build-up for me is every week like from like probably march yeah. till september it's every week looking at what's going on what are they doing you know updating everybody with, you know, anything from, you know, moving wood around to whatever. It's just, you know, anything I can find just to let everybody, hey, you know, the excitement's real for six months. So it's like it is. just standing at that rope, waiting for it to drop. Well, they don't really drop it right away anymore like they used to because of the safety, you know. Right. But, you know, just like waiting for those monsters to come out and then, you know, you can just go and you're like, it's happening. It's starting on opening night. It's like, always got to do it. Always got to be at that rope drop. Yes. Oh, yes. And it's like, uh, I'm excited every year. And I, I kind of go, I kind of don't really go into, I just go into it with, okay, let's see what they got. And, you know, I'll go through it. And then, you know, afterwards, you know, when it's over, like we're talking now, we'll see how, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And I like, I know I'm jumping in uh, way far, too far ahead in, in with this comment, but I really like how they added a different opening ceremony for early entry. Right. No, let's, let's like, let's dive into that. I mean, that's a good way to kind of segue into things right there. I mean, yeah. Um, Cause he brought up opening rope drop and yes. I'm like, and because on opening night, Tim and I, we always separate. 
Right. We always, because that opening night is so massive. Scary Farm's massive. Yes. There's yeah. so much to do yep. and so much to see and cover. And it's like, we can't, we can't just be like, like this all night <laughs> right. long covering it together. Like we have to divide and conquer. And so he waits at the front of Rope Drop um, by Gold, Gold Trails Hotel. And then I go to the gate to do early entry. Right. To, so I could hit up all those mazes, like, and do that early entry experience and cover that. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, the early entry this year was really good, too. I mean, I, I really like that, uh, especially if you get the buffet. That's something that uh, that's exclusive to you. Thirty, uh, a couple, I, I think, I believe it's thirty minutes prior to the event starts. Um, mm -hmm. They let you in the back four mazes, which this year was Waxworks, the Depths, Dark Entities, and new for this year, Bloodline eighteen. Yes. And what was really interesting about that? Okay, so my experience at opening night doing doing early entry. So. I was at, at the front because the first thing when I got let in, right. I went straight to that gate to wait there. And then I heard, oh, there's this little scaremony. <laughs> and there's and there's the I love I love the conductor. I love that the conductor yes. was there doing his thing so with the good. monsters. So good. But so everybody's goal was to do bloodline, which is the smartest thing to do because it is the big new maze. Right. And so. But the thing is, people not only were just going to Bloodline, but they just kept doing Bloodline over and over. Therefore, yeah. I was I went when I went through the depths, dark entities, and waxworks. I went through all those mazes by myself. Nobody in front of me, nobody behind me, and that was ever. one of the best experience ever. That is, yeah, those, yeah, that's great. I those, love that. Those are. Yeah, those are very rare, those experiences nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> but that was because it was opening night and everybody was like, Bloodline! Yeah. So I yeah. did Bloodline first because it's like, okay, it's the new maze. Do it first, you know? Right. That was my my plan. I always have, Tim and I, we always have strategies Yeah. But, um, when going into Scary Farm. Oh, we we. we I think next season we gotta do a little collab and let's 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 go over everyone's game plan, man. It's gotta yeah, be right. No! <laughs> Let's not share the secrets! I know. I have I never heard people's <laughs> game plans are. It's kind of funny, right? Uh, yeah. Because if we share the game plan, then everybody will do the game plan, and the game plan is ruined. The game plan is ruined. That's why whenever I see other vloggers post the top tips and tricks, I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't post it. But they post it. I'm like, yeah, it's I try, cool. I, they get, I the try views. To, um, they get the views and it helps. I like that it helps first timers. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, but then, I, like, if everybody's doing the tips and tricks, then it's not really a tip and trick anymore. I know. Because then everybody's Everybody doing knows it. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like telling tips as we're going along in yes. the vlogs, usually. So yeah. that way, if that way, if they're paying attention, then they get to know the tip as they're watching it. Yeah. So and you got some like, people hey, that will still, hold the notepad and write it all down. Oh, yeah. Them. They'll be like, hey, that's a good idea. Yeah. You know? And it's like, yeah. so. Anything to help out, you know. <laughs> yeah. One of the things but, that that I like that I like to do this year that I did that was new was a more of like a no before you go, especially with like a, a lot of new policies and in, in effect stuff. So like, oh, yes, that's oh, yeah. important. Yeah, especially like you know with the chaperone policy and and the bag one being the huge one this year. Like, I mean, a lot of people I don't think a lot of people realized that how enforced that was going to be this year, and it, I'm glad. Yeah. They, they kind of were coming through on their enforcement, so that was pretty good. For, them, for most of the time, every time that I went, it looked like they was being enforced. So. Oh, yeah, it was. We yeah, went yeah. about four times this yes. year, and there was the, our last visit, we were parked in the, uh, I like to call it the Soak City lot. Yeah. yeah. They had somebody out there by the bathrooms that are over there before you go into the tunnel to show the bag size, so That's that smart. way people didn't have to go all the way smart. underneath, yeah. get all the way to the front and go, oh, no, I got to turn around. Yeah. So... I will it's be honest though, as as a videographer and a photographer, that kills us. Oh yes, yeah. it, it was us. tough. I, we got lucky the first night because of media, right? But after that, no. And then we got lucky, lucky one other night because we were doing oh, like we not doing networks, behind the scenes, behind the scenes stuff for the park. Yeah, but right. that's being luck. That's luck. That we didn't luck. know we were going to go like, in. How do you got that backpack in here? <laughs> Uh, we're like, oh no, we're ambassadors. We had to film something. That's why. And they just say, hey, you want to stay in here? Because it literally took us like what 10, 15 minutes to film. Yeah, it. because when I'm filming, I'm like, boom, 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 nice. boom, boom, shot, 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 shot. Yeah, it was fun. All yeah. the monsters like, what are you doing back here? <laughs> but, stuff, so. speak, but but speaking of the bag policy, I really love our our haunt community and the haunt fans. I um 
because the bag policy, like it was like, ah, to me, like I was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And so one, one of my friends, um, she, um, got the baby pumpkin bag from love pain and stitches. Right. And then, so she just like, you know what, for the heck of it, she's going to try to take it in. And guess what? Even though it was a little bit bigger than the actual, uh, size requirement, yeah. they let her in with it. I'm like, Oh, cool. So when, <laughs> when you learn new things, I try to, um, it's good to spread the word and say, Hey, this is, this worked. Um, like this is a way that you could get in your bag into scary farm, you es know, especially when supporting small businesses. I mean, Oh yes, that too. Yeah. Cause you know, love paint and stitches make such great bags. I love it. I mean, I, my girlfriend this month or, you know, this, this last month, she, she, I don't remember who she got hers through, but she got like a really nice design that was to fit the bag policy for knots. And it yeah. had a bunch of like a little, like the serial killers from movies and stuff, but they look like kind oh, of all cool. babies and stuff. It looked really cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, cool. that's cool. So she, she was, I mean, she was smart this year. She figured out a lot of things, and, and she helped us a lot. She even made us freaking um, the the souvenir cup holders, so we didn't have to like lug them around. So I'm like, she was all prepared this year. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. I was like, thank yeah, you for my life. <laughs> I, I we try. I tried to go back to the cargo shorts, and I'm like, no, I don't like it. I like the bags. <laughs> I used to do the cargo shorts, yeah. and like after a while, I just kept putting stuff in the pockets. And then you're walking around, they're banging on my knees. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, I guess it's time for a backpack, you know. Yeah. And, and now I'm so used to it. Like honestly, when I walk around a theme park without one, I'm like, oh my god. I lost, I forgot my bag or something. I'll forget it. I'll think I'll have it there and I won't. So this, this was my best friend this year. This was this, 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 yeah. this guy right here. Cause I just hooked my camera oh, on there cool. and. Oh yeah. This was like, and then it yes. has a zipper where you can put your chips in it. Yeah. Chips, batteries, you know, I mean, that was my best yes. friend this year. I think I used um that the two nights we went. Yeah. The sling, was, a little the camera sling. sling. Yeah. So easy. You know what I mean? I just lugged it around with me. It worked out. It was good, and, and I, I and if I need to catch a shot real quick, I could literally like pull it up, turn it on, go. Yeah. Yeah, I love those little like um, those kind of slings for cameras. I don't know how to take the camera as much like I used to, but yeah. um, I, I try to at least a couple of times a season, especially right. during hunt, because yeah. sometimes phones just don't do as good as a job. I mean, they're I'm impressed. Because when I first started Knots Network, I was using the phone a lot, and then I went to the camera. Yeah. And then people thought I was using a camera when I was using the phone. And even oh, then, wow. that was like the phone, I think it was the 4 then. I don't know. I think it might have been the iPhone 4. Wow. Go <laughs> and take so, it back. yeah. No kidding, right? Yeah, I mean, no, they were like, back. those things were like bricks. If you dropped them, and it would hurt, yeah. you know? And... <laughs> yeah. Jeez. They're I, still I even iPhones. heavy now. Yeah. Man. but it's like geez <laughs> it's just nuts to see these phones these days like the, I, I talked to rick west about this he goes man if i had something like this back in the tpa days i would have been freaking golden man like this, i know you can literally do it's... everything off your phone now edit everything like it just eliminates a computer pretty much i mean i still like using my computer for yeah. certain things that's the problem i guess it's the old school in me yeah it's I know, like, I know, I know, I, and it's I mean, I don't know. My finger, I've done TikTok videos and like after a while, I'm like, okay, this takes too long. I could do it faster on my computer. Yeah. You know, and then I could get like the right timing and everything and like, you know, editing's a little easier on the computer, in my opinion, at least. Right. Right. Um, so opening ceremony overall, though, I mean, it was it was such a, a unique one this year. The whole train conductor announcing every zone, every experience that you loved it. To, that was awesome. I mean, that audio was just great. Like, if I could just get that audio just to, like, have as just, like, a background or whatever, just to listen to every now and then, like, and then thankfully through YouTube, we can. Oh, yeah. Yes! Right? A know? lot of people have filmed that opening ceremony. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, that was a good, it was great that he actually, like, you could see him this time. Yes. Like, last year, you just heard him. You didn't see him. It's so. like, where is he? Yeah. I was expecting him to walk like on the balcony of the hotel. That would have been really cool. You know, I was literally expecting that last year, but I was like, I don't see him. So I'm like, it's okay. It's our first year back. I don't expect, I didn't expect everything to be right. top, you know, right there. So, but then when we saw him down, like on fog alley, I was like, Whoa, there he is. I'm like, Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> oh, it's so, and then that, you know, it's always that, that build up for fog alley too. It's like, you see, you know, you're getting there early. You see the fog building up. 
in your head, you can already see, be like, okay, this is going to be a great night. This is Fog Alley. Like, this is famous right here. And you hear the yeah. people, the, the surrounding people around you that are just, like, terrified because they have to go down there to get through other places. And then the audio starts, and that's when people really get, like, the energy starts building again. And as uh, especially with this year, as he's announcing every scare zone, and, and then yeah. when he finally says those final words of, like, he, he has to go and not scary farm uh, monsters are unleashed and stuff, like, that was just goosebumps moment it's right amazing. there. Like I, yeah. I get goosebumps just thinking about it because that's how fun it was. And yes. I mean, it was just such a. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I have a really soft spot for 2019's opening ceremony. That right there was just an A1, you know, opening ceremony. But this year, it, it's up there. I have. Oh yeah. yeah. It's up there. It is up there. Let's talk some. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about some of those mazes, man. These mazes this year. Separate hit. It was just awesome. Oh yeah. Awesome. Oh yes. Yes. Always awesome. Let's start with. Oh yeah. Let's start with. Um, I want to save the new ones for last. The new ones are they were they 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 I have a I have a few things I'd like to say about the new ones that I I, I really, do too. Yes. I yeah. got yeah. opinions. We have opinions. Yes. <laughs> and those, that, that's gonna be the breaking news right there. So we'll start with some some fan favorites. Let's start about the two that are leaving that left us this oh. year. Let's start. Oh. Off, oh. Let's start off with the pumpkin eater. Um, oh my heart's broken because pumpkin eater it goes into the hollow like it fits with the theming so perfectly yeah. and plus peter peter pumpkin Eater. i love pumpkin theme maze it is right. like everything about that maze is just like it's so awesome you know yeah 100 percent. what about you tim i what love you oh go ahead i'm sorry oh. finish oh. it's okay it's okay <laughs> i love how it's like a folklore like based maze it's great yeah, I love that. So, I, I mean, it was just so, something that was very unique, especially for the time period. Um, yeah. It's awesome. What about you, Tim? T uh, Pumpkin Eater, man. Oh, it's a good one. It's sad that it goes. There's something about that spot, too. The mazes there are always just awesome, you right. know, because it's I think it's because they um, they're like in and out and the, the smells of the uh, surroundings just make yeah. it better. Oh, and, yeah. You know, and yeah, it, it sucks to it. It will suck to see it go, but exciting to, for something new yeah we, and i'm hopefully yeah. whatever it is it will tie in with the new scare zone maybe hopefully yeah. yeah yeah because that's what that what brings that extra level of detail and immersiveness to scary farm having those mazes tie into the scare zones so it feels like a fluid like when you're venturing through the hollow it, it the theming is just fluid if that makes any sense to you oh 100 percent. i mean uh, looking into the 50th for this area obviously with the hollow being its final year too like i i hope that this is just me being a fan i i don't know anything i i, I try to keep myself spoiler free because i i want to go in super surprised when i when i see what's going to be announced but my hopes for that area is maybe i think something like in the lines of an anniversary house or something would be perfect right there going into a an HHN zone. style yeah an HHN style inspired area yeah yeah and then going back into like a throwback zone of some sort like that would be perfect I, I think yeah I, I don't know where, what's gonna come in the future I mean that in my opinion I think would be awesome um, they're gonna bring back mirror mirror yeah and they're oh, gonna man. make it bigger and it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm kidding, yeah, I'm, yeah, kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding we're gonna, we're gonna get we're gonna get a doll factory too we're finally gonna get that gunslinger too and that, that Dead <laughs> Dead, you know it's like all that hey <laughs> i wouldn't mind a return for doll factory like yes. how they revive like dominion of the dead yeah yeah Damn. doll factory Dominion. was a fun one yeah like if they bring back like an older like That's a, a classic one. like doll factory i wouldn't be mad I would. I would. I'd be happy. I'd be a happy clam. Yeah, that's that's like. This clam is happy. That's like what. That's what I remember the most as a kid, just going through daytime operations and seeing like the giant facade. Oh yeah. Of her dollhouse, and just remember as a kid being terrified of looking at that. It's and, like, ooh, that giant doll head. Yes, those yeah. were the days when you could see the mazes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that's old I remember. Yeah. yeah. Now they're like, no, we got to The kids get scared. I get it. You yeah, know. Yeah, like, I get it. They, yeah. They can't really interrupt the day ops as much as they used to. Yeah. So, and I get it. It makes sense. A lot of people be coming there now. So, especially because they can get away with it with Origins too, because it's not really much. It kind of fits already in the theming with Ghost Town. So, exactly. yes, exactly. You know? Yeah, so that, that worked out fine. That worked um, out the little thing right there. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I I remember those days. I mean, and and I I, I remember never ever getting to go inside of it either. Cause I was just, you never got to go in it. No. So everything, factory? everything I know about that maze is from POVs that I've watched. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm sorry I'm, you didn't get it. Go through it. <laughs> May I ask why? I I think because at the time, what was that around 2000? It's last year was 2011. 2011. Okay. I went in 2008 as a kid. Okay. This is a story okay. that I tell a lot of people. This is how this is my first haunt experience ever. 2008, I go to Not Scary Farm as a kid. I think I'm in like the fifth grade or something. Oh, so you're a kid, kid. Yeah. Kid, um, kid. Okay. I, I wanted to go because as a kid, I would always watch walkthroughs on YouTube. You know, I'd watch all oh, the yeah. stuff on YouTube. And I end up, uh, we, my dad ends up buying us tickets. Um, I remember us going. I remember me being very excited. And then when we got in, I was <laughs> terrified, crying in my dad's Oh, yeah, because you're a in kid. In my dad's shirt. And. <laughs> Um, I think we went through one maze and walked around the park and then left in like two hours. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my story of, of how I was introduced to haunt. And now, uh, I am just a, a haunt fanatic now. I can't, I can't get When did you anything. return to haunt? 2011. And I ended up going, I returned with Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, okay. Cause you, you said you didn't go through doll factory and, and I asked when you returned and you said 2011, like, Oh, then you could have done yeah. doll factory. Yeah. I, got, I got confused. I was like, huh? No, no, no. I, I but yeah, that Nott's, makes sense. Yeah, you did. Knott's was 2012. I, I, I returned. Okay, Nott's. cool. Yeah. Word. So it was like the year after I was like, man, so, but since we just talked about pumpkin eater, can I give you a funny little pumpkin eater story? Of course. Okay. So. I don't know how often you watch our videos, but it was sometime during the summer of when we were filming vlogs um, right. last year. And when to film Build for Pumpkin Eater, I'm going to give away the secrets now. Everybody uh, knows. I'm giving away the, the secrets. Secret. So you hop on that stagecoach. <laughs> yeah, you got on the stagecoach. <laughs> and you we're... hope that you get sit on the top. <laughs> okay, so one, one day during the hot summer, we we're sitting on top of the stagecoach, and there is behind us sitting towards the front right. um on on the top of it was a girl little girl and her mom and then no no, and, no, 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 no no okay tell the story you weren't Tim. even there actually that day i was there she was sitting next to me and then her sister was sitting next to me and then she was like oh look at the scary pumpkin oh it's for that scary farm and my, she my, had she to be like, like a little kid oh, yeah, she <laughs> was she said, tiny hey, yeah, I, I ended up. I, I think I just post, I posted it also on like just stories. Or yeah, because it's it funny. funny. That's hilarious. It's funny. That but the little funny. kid was like, "Look at the scary pumpkin! It's the not scary farm." <laughs> this is the so cutest adorable. thing ever. Yeah. Yes. Hundred yes. percent. So adorable. Uh, you know what? I love it too. I mean, the, one of the things that I found uh, really cool this year is like um, you see a lot of parents that will bring their young ones, but those sit in the zones and kind of bond with them with this. And yeah. when, when you see that work out, like that just makes my ha my soul so happy because I'm just like, they're getting so started young and they're going to they're gonna be so, so excited when they get older. They finally get to go through main oh, yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? Like, And then, um, uh, so on some nights, so in order to get your fast lanes, right. you have your vouchers. So you go into the general store mm -hmm in ghost town to get those you know scanned and then to get your wristbands for the night right that that was a hot spot we saw for like at the very beginning of the night for kids to be like crying their eyes out because they don't really because the, they didn't like it was hard to gauge for that family to, if it was going to be too scary for them and it yeah. was so yeah. they're like crying and going ah! <laughs> You know. Yeah, and then, but you know what? You had some, you had some monsters that it actually would take the time to calm them down and and yes, and scare for them. You know what I mean? Like they'd be like, pick someone out and I'll scare them. Like, yeah, I heard that a few times this night in like Ghost Town Carnival, um, and you know That's a couple other zones. And just to hear that, you know, I'm like, you're kind of. That's how you warm them. Those are the good scare them. actors. Yeah, that's how you warm them into loving these events because like exactly. You know, that's that's cool. I'm not saying. Scare actors don't scare everyone because that is your job essentially is to scare. Oh, yeah. You know, but the ones that go the extra step to kind of try to calm kids down and, and have fun with it, like, is, is the, you know, that's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. And and speaking of, of might as well, because, you know, right outside of Pumpkin Eater, another, sadly, uh, a scare zone that left us this year, the Hollow. This I one. really loved the early years of the Hollow. It was so immersive. Yeah. You, the witches, the witch hunters. I saw my gold coin, yeah. and then the burning of the wicker it man. It reminded me of yeah. a, like a hunt version of Ghost Town Alive, basically. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I remember they would tell you, go look for this person or go, you know, it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. We would spend, we had the pass then and we went there at least once a week and hung out at the hollow the most that yeah. time. That's cool. So, yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely love, love the, the people over at the hollow, man. They yes. did an amazing job. That was some of my favorite areas to go get some slider footage right there. And, and, and certain areas of that, of that zone. And, and this year to kind of have, the whole the wicker man burning and stuff like have this they, they brought back the idea of the show again because um, I remember in 2019 they had a much different more interactive show with the actors and whatnot and it was just so um, so amazing to see that and yeah I I I I I'm going to miss the zone a lot I really am I'm going to miss it too I love the theming I love everything about the zone yeah a lot of fun a lot of fun. I can tell you like it. Uh, yeah. yeah, the hat. Got to, I, yes. I, had, I had to buy it this year. I'm like, this is it. This is, the, you know, I had some friends that worked in there. And I'm like, I'm doing this for you guys. That's why I wore They it still today. had a few uh, merchandises um, left over from um, Scary Farm at really? Virginia's. Today, yeah. Nice. yeah. And a lot of hats still. A lot of hats. I was like, oh, I shouldn't. But no, nah, I didn't. <laughs> I have enough hats. <laughs> I, I saw know. a dark. There was like a couple of dark ride hats. I was like, ooh, you know, and you're like, ah, man, that was cool when they went crazy with the hats. Yeah, I like that. I love the hats because I, 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 I am a hat guy, and I, I yeah, the hats to fit me every day of the month and in a month. So awesome. Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, so rest in peace to Hollows and Pumpkin Eater. We will miss them. We will miss you. We will miss them in the arms of (laughs) the angels. A little compilation with that song in the background right there. I know. I will remember (laughs) you. (laughs) We got Dark Ride that also left us this year. Another 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 sad loss right there. That was a phenomenal maze. Yeah, that was my favorite maze of this year. Oh, yeah. I love Dark Ride so so. It's one of my favorite mazes of all time. I love Dark Ride so much. It's such a perf. It's a perfect concept of going through a dark ride and then like through the back stage and then the carnies are evil and carnival. Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> that is what we call a cookbook classic right there. <laughs> a cookbook <laughs> classic. John's oh my goodness. Himself. That's awesome. Yes. Oh my goodness. We here at the Knights of Horror are big fans of the cookbook. We Oh you're awesome. we the cookbook. We love the cookbook and ah. uh, and we we call out the cookbook every time we go to haunt this year um <laughs> we've actually we designed a shirt for john cook that says the oh cookbook. that's so cool oh, that's the cookbook. i think he's the only one in existence that has a a, a copy <laughs> so i mean that's great yeah everything we see john cook it's the cookbook we're big fans of john cook uh, uh, here on the oh my Apple goodness so after this this podcast you need to send me a picture of the cookbook i want to see it yeah i uh i it's 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 the bible it's the haunt bible that we call it it is the <laughs> essential kind of um he's the author and we're just the publishers we're spreading out the good message of the cookbook i love it awesome (laughs) but no dark ride uh this was one that we got to do on the behind the fog tour and Mm. this was a great one to do because i didn't realize how much easter eggs were in this maze you know after doing that tour like our tour guide was so good and um, I absolutely just had a, a phenomenal time to, to get to know this maze even further one last time. You know, it was, it was, That's it was so awesome. Good. I'm going to miss Dark Red a lot because it's perfect. Like, it is a perfect, I can't, perfect. perfect. It's perfect. Yes. Especially yes. because it's the best of both worlds. You got the haunt fans that love it and you got the theme park fanatics that love it as well. Exactly. Yes. It's the yes. best of both so, worlds. Oh, man. Yeah. That one will be missed. We've gone through it many, 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 many times, times. Many times. Yes. And it's great how they added the little gift shop at the end that one year. Yes. That was good stuff. And they had like interactive things if you t- touch buttons in the control room. Yeah. I don't know if it worked this last year, but I remember it would do something. Like yeah. it would change the screen or something. From what, what we were told on the Behind the Fog tour, it actually will change different camera um, feeds from that maze or other mazes. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, that's so cool. If you paid attention to the feed, it could be feeds from other mazes and whatnot. You never. It know sucks because it's like it feels like you're, you know, running through. You're like, no. Oh. I know. I want. <laughs> yeah, to you're lucky there. you got the. 
go through um, behind the fog to that maze. That was one of the ones we were really we were hoping, hoping oh. for. We were really yeah. crossing we our fingers. We were like, oh, I hope. But <laughs> we, we did, when we did the behind the uh, the fog, we did Mesmer. <sighs> we did Origins. I did Origins. That one was good. And then we did um, Waxworks. Uh, Waxworks and The Depths. Uh, what was but, mine? It was, um, I think I, I think I only got three, maybe. Well, we because, got four because of there wasn't something else that was available yet for oh, us. So we were able to do that. So yeah. that's yeah. why we got the fourth awesome. one. They're like, well, this isn't ready, so we could go do this. I'm like, okay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so now I, I the on the fog tour was such a, a I, and I hope they bring it back for the 50th, especially the 50th. You know, there's so much. I, oh, yeah. I would think they would bring it back for the it 50th. It would be nice. Maybe they will add the newer mazes too. Yeah, because I need oh. I need a deep dive. Yes, I need to look into the yes and the uh, bloodline because bloodline. I feel like the four four times we went through it, I think that's all I went through it. I didn't notice things until the last run through it. I was right. like, wow, I didn't notice that opening night. Yeah, I didn't notice that the second time. I didn't even notice that the third time. What the heck is going on? <laughs> Anyways, we'll get there. We'll get there. I know. We're getting there. I'm teasing y'all. I was about to say a lot of stuff right here, right now. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we're getting there. It's we're getting right. there. We're getting there. And I love the energy. Let's keep it going. I love it. Uh, Carn Evil. Carn Evil. Uh, this is a fun one. Uh, I had a good friend who went over from Ghost Town to Carn Evil. Killed it this year. Absolutely Good. killed it this year. Um and and he just with his split personalities just caused chaos. I have a lot of friends that work on Carnival and they're all very talented. Um Bobbins herself actually just went viral through Carnival. I don't know if you've seen the video. Oh yes, where she slides and then tie your shoe. Yes. Tie your shoe. Yes, I saw that. Viral. Yes, and I I've saw the other video. viral video too. I I I I I'm on the TikToks way too much. Oh, so I know. Don't it, don't I'm it. like this. If we're talking about the still walker viral one, I mean I mean that's shame shame oh, on man. all the people and that guy. Just like like kicking a scare actor, like really? And it's even more dangerous a scare actor on still. So I, I was like, this is ridiculous. I had a conversation with my buddy. Uh, here's here's our PSA portion. Of the podcast right here. Yes. Um, don't touch the scare actors. Don't touch the scare don't actors. Don't do it. But don't. I, I had a friend that was on the podcast recently, and he actually did stilts over at uh, Halloween Horror Nights. Mm -hmm. And we addressed, you know, this one and, and what happened over at Horror Nights. And, um, oh, you, did you see that other yeah, viral video that from, was where that much. guy just got tackled? Ooh. Yeah, that was too much. So, and we addressed them both, and especially the Stillwalker one. I mean, for starters, don't ever touch characters. Um, exactly. You know, it's it's you know they're doing their job. You pay good money to see essentially a live theater performance of them. But the people who are doing it, they're jerks. Yeah. They're just jerks. Yeah. Yeah. They're and jerks. So they don't care about like the rules or anything. They just care about being a jerk. So mm -hmm. and ruining the experience for everybody because they want to like pump up their their little ego. Yeah. Exactly. No, minuscule ego especially with still walkers i mean take this in mind the next time you even think about doing that which i hope you never do but uh one wrong move on a still walker and they can potentially fall and, and die that's yeah that's, that's like up truth it's like, no joke yeah they're up there high and they can fall and if they fall wrong and split their head open guess what buddy you, you're going to jail for manslaughter that night yeah and it's very clear in that video that 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 guy on the phone and the guy filming, yeah. they don't care. Nope. They just care about their egos. Yeah. Their egos. Egos. Exactly. No. And, and and it's just it's one of those things where, like I said, they're 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 hired to do a job. They're hired to tell exactly. a story. They're hired mm -hmm. to scare you. Like yes. they are told not to touch you. And they follow those rules because they like to scare and keep scaring. And so they obey those rules because they want to keep coming back and they love doing this. Yes. And to have like the whole point of like scare acting so and haunting, it's to provide this awesome immersive experience, but do it in like in a safe way. You know, that's why I like going to haunts. It's like I like getting the scare and the adrenaline rush, but it's an, in a safe environment, you know? Yeah, 100 percent. Like, I trust all these scare actors because they're all so talented and they know what they're doing. I, I trust them 100% not. Like, they won't hurt me. No. No, like, yeah. 
No. I always, I, I, I love the saying that they always say: if we can't scare them, let's let's make them laugh, and if we can't make them laugh, let's entertain ourselves. And yes, that, I love that. The majority of the time, it's me laughing, but there is a couple of instances where they'll catch me off guard and they scare me. It's a little hard to scare me now because I know most of these people, but I still let them try because they <laughs> could get me off guard without me seeing. But for the most part, it's just entertainment for me because I love watching. Oh, my movies. goodness. Speaking of being caught off guard, the best scare that I've gotten all haunt season at any haunt was at Ghost Town. Ghost Town. Entering, entering the, you know, the big Ghost Town sign, the Welcome to Ghost Town. Yeah. Uh, Tim and I, we were distracted by death. And we're like, oh, look, it's death. It's death. And then out comes Gecko. <laughs> like, I, I didn't. You, you crawled out from the dark shadows. I didn't. I screamed at the top of my lungs and I jumped. I legit, I was so, like, I, that was a legit scare. I screamed and jumped. <laughs> and then Otis and Merrick were there to, like, just egg it oh, on, you know? Oh, you got Merrick getting involved now. That's just, it's yeah. done. It's game over. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's game it over. It's game over with Merrick, man. It is game over. Um, and that's not a, and that's a good team scare. Like, oh, yeah. death is a distraction, and then out comes Gecko. Yeah. No, and and you know I liked I like seeing all those all those guys scary. It was it was really good to see them all return. Uh, Merrick, yeah. Merrick was not there last season, but he was there this I season. Know. He came back with a vengeance. I love that Merrick returned. Yeah, and I have I love a, seeing all these guys return. They're all so amazing. I I have a friend who I will not name that is terrified of Merrick, and they uh, were terrified to walk through Ghost Town. Sucky part was they knew someone that was their significant other that worked in Ghost Town, so they didn't have a choice but to stay in Ghost Town. <laughs> oh. they had to dodge Merrick every chance they got. Merrick is, if I may dive into it, Merrick is such a brilliant character yeah. in the way it's a psychological terror yeah. of what of what his he is. You know, mm -hmm. he 100%. what he. He what he does is a hundred percent psychological, and then he mixes it in with the jump scares. But he is a, a very good at like whispering all the like evil things, and it's like oh creepy, scary. Yeah. Like I'm scared. He's really really good. And then the scream, and then a choo -choo -choo -choo, and it's like the and then the yelling at the skeletons, and then <laughs> and, and I filmed a moment where Merrick was like talking to um, Miss Goldies at the hotel not the hotel, but Miss Goldie's and the, the skeleton on top of her roof. Yeah. And then he's like, and then the pig twin was like, she doesn't want you or like some dumb thing like that. I'm like, oh, the pig twins egging it on, yep. egging Merrick on. It's yep. great. I, I seen that a couple times this year. I, I stood there for like five minutes one time just recording him because he was going at it with skeletons on top of the, the hotel. And oh, yeah, <laughs> it's great. It's just fun to sit there. I mean, you know, you got these very – I mean, I think that's the great part about Knots, no matter what zone you're in too, but Ghost Town is really famous for it. But they get the, uh, they get the opportunity to really dive in to create these characters that they want to – bring to life in in the streets of ghost town or or carnival or goring 20s whatever i mean you know forsaken lake hollows all these all these characters just are so unique in their own way and, and they're yes. so great at storytelling and and, yes. and and extending that extended universe of a story you know what i mean and and it's just really cool to see the creativity behind the, the um all the employees and, and everything everyone there it's it's a team effort in the end of the day and they and they really knock it out of the park you know I, mean? I agree. Yeah. Everyone's so damn talented and so amazing. I absolutely love it. I they I admire them so much, and I'm thankful for them for making our experiences amazing. Because they they are what Scary Farm is. They bring it to life. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Now looking back at those mazes, there was something that was added new into a maze this year that was a new kind of intro because last year it just uh for due to time they were kind of throwing people in and that's mesmer mm -hmm. yes. side show of the mind now i i have to say i kind of dig the new intro it's 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 quick simple straight to the point and get you right into the maze i mean yes i, I love last year's intro i'm glad i got to see that whole opening ceremony for that 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 was really cool to kind of to see that whole pre-show but I have to say, this one would just really get you through and, and get you right into the action. Like, what did you guys think about Mesmer Year 2 and, and this new intro? I liked Mesmer Year 2 a lot. And I think the new intro, it helps with flow through. Mm -hmm. 
like it's just you flow right through that intro and even though having a really theatrical like ooh, like introduction like the first year is great this is just better for capacity if that makes sense for everybody to have a full experience of the story and maze well yeah and then the story changes a little bit yeah that's the cool part and i yeah i like how all of a sudden the whole it's different i mean for yeah. anybody that went in the first year and then you go in the second year you go whoa yeah it's like it all of a sudden you it see evolves. you see what actually happened to the um I don't know what that thing's called. The <laughs> gyroscope. I think the that's gyroscope. what it is. <laughs> the gyro. The, the spinning. The thing. The thing that make you go. The scope. The scope. The thing that makes you hypnotized. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It spins. It makes yeah. your eyes go. Ugh. And and with the mazes evolving every year, like the new intro for Mesmer, it shows like at first you're just in a normal tent in year one, and now everything has gone to hell. Yeah. And it makes it even more like the 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 evil has intensified year yeah, two. Yeah. 100%. That's how I see it. <laughs> and not to mention this year, I took advantage. Every time I walked through, I made sure I went through the red door this time. Cause I didn't, <laughs> I time. went through the red door too. We yeah. went through that too. We didn't even know it was. There. Yeah. <laughs> it, Cause it, we found out about it because of the behind the fog tour. Yeah. We're like, what? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm like, our last night, our um, when we went, we went through that door actually. Yeah, and yeah. I scared some people by accident because I came out the other side of the red door and they went, "Oh!" <laughs> <laughs> it's kind yeah, of like all... it's kind of like a blessing because you're walking out and people are like, "Where did they come from?" It's like I, I know it's funny. <laughs> I got ways. I am a ways. part of the maze. I'm part yes. of the maze. I have one with. I, I'm I one with the maze. The maze. <laughs> I am the maze. <laughs> Oh, good stuff. Oh, dude. I, I, I absolutely love Mesmer. And I remember walking through it in 2021 and just being blown away by yes. uh, by this design and this story. And, and just yeah. thinking, who was on acid when they made this maze? Because <laughs> Shit, there's right? no physically possible other way to not do that maze on some sort of substance. Because, <laughs> I mean, look at Alice in Wonderland. That guy was on acid when he made that thing. And I was like, that's probably one of the most global <laughs> phenomenal stories ever made. Mesmer had to be the same thing. Right? And, and what, like, Mesmer also fits into Carnival beautifully. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's another one that fits into this. Yeah. The, uh, Especially with Mesmer taking that idea of, like, that old style 50s Carnival. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's, it's really cool to kind of see that. I, I love that kind of, I love those time periods, the way they dressed. And, and you know, when you know it's like that, the old school kind of like a, the sideshows you would see in like those those time periods and whatnot and, and everything. So that was, totally. you know, that's why I think I, I really and and Knotts is a really, really good at at creating and capturing and putting you immersed into those time periods. They they yes. for that, you know. So I totally. absolutely loved Mesmer. Um, I I gotta give it to now. We gotta we gotta give some kudos to the 2022 Scare Zone of the Year. The Goring Twenties. Yes, I love Goring Twenties. Oh Goring my 20s. God, this okay. I love Carnival too. Car no, I, I love. Did, all I, I don't know if I said, yeah, I said yeah. that. I love. We it. all love Carnival. And the Hollow. Carnival yeah. is great. All these scare zones, they're all but, everybody's talented. But Goring Twenties this year. Yes. Yes. Every scare actor that I've talked to about that, it's like year one. It was like okay. Brand new zone. We got it. Let's figure out this storyline. It was figuring it out. Yeah, year it was one, like, definitely. okay, let's get the, by the end of that run, their characters were pretty much figured out. They had mm -hmm. time to kind of uh, add to it if they wanted to. And year two, they just dove in head. First yes. And yes. I love arc. all the care. All the characters are so top notch in yeah. Goring 20s. I love how immersive it is, how they interact with you. Yeah. And the whole thing with the blind tiger. The the, blind did you know the dance? You know what the actual password is? No. Do you know what the real? I know what the real password is. <laughs> it's actually the, if you look on the blind tiger merchandise, the password is on the merchandise. Ooh, for all you for all you fanatics out there, if you did not know that blind tiger merchandise, I, I, and they still have some. Blind they tiger do merchandise still have, yeah. Uh, I think. And Virginia's. <laughs> I think it's Walter Knox. And Walter Knott is Walter the app. Uh, Good for Walter them. Walter Knott is the this. password. I tried doing it, though, um, and they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> the, the whole thing's part of this, this thing, right? yeah. <laughs> the stick. Yeah. The blind tiger is an ongoing joke the whole night. Like, if you actually spend your entire night, and, you know, luckily for the people that had passes did get to do that. They were probably there 
seeing the entire storyline last year i spent a lot of time in there and it was i didn't really i i think that this year way better than last year they right. figured out what they were doing and you know i've no like mary told me they were they did this last year but i never saw it the the noise where they all die oh yeah, yeah. when the when the clock chimes and no then everybody idea. dies yeah she's like oh they did that last year i'm like what i, think I spent like every 45 they uh they do it i believe that's yes. crazy i seriously spent like an hour there and they yeah. never I did knew. that yeah every 45, <laughs> that's hilarious um one of my good friends played the cigar lady who had the box that was yeah easily one of the most easiest but most effective scares i've seen oh and yeah the fingers in the box she actually this was her gift to me ah because i I've, I've pressed her entire year i'm like i've offered you a dollar for a cigar and you never gave me one <laughs> i want we, my cigar this year we got some bloody money from that zone yes, oh yeah that, that was a blood yes, money blood, blood money, money. Yes. Yeah. the um that zone is like basically um it's got a mix it's like hybrid zone it has um just like going or uh, the hollow was yes it's immersive it's got a story and story yeah. and the scares it has it oh, all God. I mean, I and I, then I also the nice entertainment too. I love the jazz, the, the jazz, jazz band, band. And, the, and the dancing. It's so yes. perfect. It, yes, it really brings that twenties vibe, like a full full rap right there. Oh yeah, and, I I I tell a lot of people who work at Knotts that having that jazz band it makes the zone even more alive. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, and that, like I I remember the first time seeing that this year. And kind of just looking there and like, oh, this is cool. And then when I came back a few times, I, f I caught myself watching the entire show because it's just so good. It's good. Yeah. Dan it's they got, so good. They got, they got live actors up there dancing along to the music, telling the story up there. You got the yes. actors doing their thing down on the bottom. Like, it's a whole team effort, and it's so amazing. Yeah, it's wonderful. And what also I like to add, it's kind of Goring 20s related, kind of not. Um, I love how the conductor would go from zone to zone to zone to zone. Yeah, and he freedom. and I yes, and I have footage of him like being spooky at me in, in the Goring Twenty zone. I'll never forget it. it he's great. Oh but he uh I love the conductor. Funny story with him that this is something I never caught on camera, but uh, it was it was a very interesting night. I used I in the past our our kind of our, our bench that we've kind of in a way, like that's where we go sit all the time. Every time we go, is the bench, the Kmart Alley bench. That's 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 our oh, bench. Yeah. I, I kind of know where that is. I love that bench so much. Um, I I would get a lot of uh 2019, a lot of great scares down there and everything. I'm sitting there one night. I think my friend went to go buy a funnel cake. My girlfriend went to the restroom. Um, and I'm sitting there by myself, and he just kind of pulls up and pops a squat. And I look over. I'm like hello and uh he just starts he starts talking to me and i don't understand a word that he's saying but it's creepy as hell i know that much and i just remember after he left just being entirely confused as to whether or not that was a dream or reality yeah I, that's I, that's a part like the same thing with merrick the psychological scare yeah it's just it's yeah creepy and he and this guy pulled it off so good did he call you son of man i think so yeah, he called me daughter of man. I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy. It, it was just, it was such a unique experience to see him walk around place to place. I mean, it would, it's an amazing experience. It would have been cool if he would have just stood somewhere in some of the mazes too to really extend that story. Just kind of him just floating around everywhere. You know what I mean? Just like speaking of actors and mazes, I cracked up. See. So I when we on on our last night going to Scary Farm, we were walking through Origins, and I'm like, in the church scene, I'm like, I, am I am I just extra blind tonight, or is that the gambler? And the gambler was just hanging out in the church light scene. <laughs> yeah, that's Chilling. right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's he's like, like, that's a gambler. I'm like, I'm like what? I looked. I'm like. Why has he got slider gear? Yeah, no, that was <laughs> and I realized that he was not supposed to be in there. Just chilling. <laughs> yeah, just funny. chilling. Just, just being the he's gambling great. in the church with the with the, the with the bride. Great transition right there. Origins. It's always a fan or, favorite. 
oh, it, yes. it's iconic. It's great. And then, oh, what I learned this year was the 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 grimoire of yeah. Sarah Marshall is the grimoire in the grimoire. And then seeing the grimoire, it's and it's like it's the grimoire. I learned that too. Oh, grimoire. I learned that too, and I looked at my tour guide immediately. I'm like, has that book always been there, or was that new for this year? They claim that it's always been there, and I'm like, I have never seen it until this year. I same. I've same, never seen it till this same. year. Same. So I gotta look at old flow through and yeah. see. The problem is, is you're probably of the too busy looking at the witch. Yeah, it's true. That first year, you're just kind of like, huh? You're just like, whoa, uh -huh. cool. Uh -huh. You know. So yeah, I bet you not too many people looked down. Yeah, you noticed your, your that. Your sight's there, so you gotta be like, actually, like a diehard, really scan the room when you go in just to see it. Because I think you're supposed to be like. um what was the word again? There's a series, like there's something going on with Origins and the Grimoire. Oh, like yeah. That show last so year. All this they're is saying, supposed to tie it's, together. It's all yeah. tying it. And if you watched our interview from the begin before the season started, they say it's all building up to something bigger for the 50s. Yeah. My, that's what my theory is this. I love theories. This is my theory. So, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about Grimoire, but I'll, I'm going to talk a little bit about the storyline about it before we give our reviews about it um, okay cool a lot of people were very confused this year with the grimoire a lot of people just kind of walked in and walked out thinking yes it was a very beautiful maze very well put together just the story was a little confusing to me now everybody knows that the grimoire ties into two two factors of um of knots past especially uh with last year and what's going on with the grimoire book itself um last year they had a show in the mystery lodge that i heard ties into the grimoire as well yes um and the grimoire itself is obviously we all know now is the witch's book um and my theory is with the grimoire you're seeing where this book went throughout the decades and what happens to people when they open it and read from it and how much evil is released into the world Yes, that's exactly what it is, uh, that much, maze. Yeah, much like how you see that in Ghost Town, what you saw in 2019 when she pretty much cast her spell and cursed the town of Calico. You're seeing yes. what her what her book has power and how she has the power and how she gets the power from the book. Yes. That's why there's gr flashing green throughout yeah, Ghost Town. Throughout Ghost Town, right. And <laughs> so 2019, the last time we saw The Hanging, okay, uh, we, we had a great storyline where it was Ghost Town, Origins, and The Hanging kind of all tied together. To oh, this one big yes. Story line. With the witches yes. and, in The Hanging. Yes. 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 Last time we saw The Hanging was in 2019. We have not seen The Hanging since. Yes. For the 50th, this is what I predict uh, hopefully will go storyline-wise. This will be the okay. comeback of The Witch because The Witch, we know, is one of the most iconic uh, mascots of Not Scary Farm Past. I mean, yes. When when people think of Not Scary Farm, one of the things they think about is the Green Witch. It is yes. it is an iconic staple of the event, and it is a fan favorite staple of the event as well. Um, yes. I predict that twenty twenty three for the fiftieth, we'll we'll see the return of the witch coming back with a vengeance, and we'll see her in her like her true form uh, as we see her transform in Origins. Um, you'll see her probably out in the streets, but then again, that will also bring back the return, hopefully, of the Hanging. Because uh, for those who don't know, before it was a parody show uh, with pop culture references and whatnot, it was an original stunt show. Yes. And Bless. it'd be a great idea to just bring it back to its roots for the 50th. You know, a lot of that's a fan favorite show. A lot of people will enjoy it. Uh, and I think it's the smart move. Good idea. I mean, that's a good theory. But I don't see the hanging coming back. Yeah, well, so. not 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 yeah. as uh, not as how it used to be. I don't they, think they, it's gonna like, come back as like a, a pop culture kind of thing. I no, think it's gonna go back it won't to come back no, like cause, that. Cause yeah. it, we know been, that for we've sure, been shown but... from time and time again. Modern audiences cannot handle the hanging. They mm -hmm. no, they no. Can't. It's just the but if you take away all that pop culture part, you could turn it into a stunt show. Yes, how he said it like, was like I like that yeah. your theory. You're, that's honestly, a good idea. That's a good idea. But, turn into a stunt show again because pretty much they kind of tested that theory with the circus show this year. All that was stunts. That was stunts. Yeah, yeah. it was all that like, was all yeah, stunts yeah, under under uh, you know under controlled you know, environment yeah. and everything. So 
I mean, it, it just I I know that the also the hanging has a, a long history with the event, and I think a lot of pe- I know a lot of people, a lot of a lot of fans too miss the hanging. Um, and to take it away for two years and then finally bring it back, I think would be a smart move, especially to please a lot of the diehard fans who are here for the 50th. But um, to bring it back as a stunt yeah. show again, to take away the pop culture and just kind of make it that stunt show and, and tell further tell that story of the of the Green Witch for the 50th year would be a really good idea. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. But we shall see. We got a whole year ahead right. of us. I know, right? We, we have year. to wait. We got a whole see. year. Don't Red, even- freaking horror nights over here. Oh, we're going to know our first phase. I, I can't uh, believe we did like, that. Okay. I, 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 never, I never even posted about that. I'm, I don't have post. time. No. Yeah. Yeah. Because because I'm too busy. It's Halloween. All busy. What are they thinking? I, we're going to uh, know our first maze on Halloween. Okay, I was like, really guys. I'm like, I got podcasts I'm doing like left and right. I like, I don't have time to make this video right no, now. Like, nobody yeah, had time Nobody had time. Yeah. Ain't nobody got time for that. I can't post about that right now. But again, half of that. So I'm like, sucks, I'm like, all right, I guess after I'm done with what I'm doing here, I'm, no, I can't even do that because I got, I got season screamings coming up, and and I got to do that content. Yes. Then, yeah, yes. we're not even. We're, it we're not doesn't end. Yet. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, we it thought we were gonna end. have a break, and we're like, no, no break. Oh, I got All these... Christmas haunts to attend to. Castle Dark is doing a Krampus thing. Yeah, yeah Krampus. Yeah. Like, yes! Raina Taylor want... doing something. Like everyone's doing something. I want to be a Krampus. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. I want to be. A, I want to be a Krampus. Well, hold on. This is not gonna work out. Okay. <laughs> but I. I would love to be a Krampus one day. It'd be dope. It'd be dope. Anyways, so. But yeah. I, I mean, would love to see the Green Witch come back as an icon, but my conductor. I really, really like. I love the conductor. I would he, say if too. If she comes back as an icon, then what happens what to the if, conductor? What if they brought back multiple? Icons? I was gonna say, like Ooh, they did for Horror cool. Nights in Orlando for their for their thirtieth anniversary. Yeah, that right? would be the smart. I would. That would be yeah. the smart. There's a way couple. To go. There's a couple of icons they could bring back. There's a couple. Like that they the done under. In a while what was his name? The Underlord. The under, or, or, underlord? Overlord. Underlord. I think. Over, underlord. He wore a red cape. I remember he, what he looks <laughs> like. I remember the commercials, but I forgot I his name. The Seven Deadly Sins. Remember those. Oh, oh yes, yes, I remember yes. Seven that Deadly. Was, that was a good one. And that then it would one. be interesting if they bring back the Green Witch, they bring back the Tricksters. I'd like to see that. 100%. So, Tricksters I mean, are fun. There's a lot of theories going into this, and we're going to talk more about Grimoire in a, in a little bit. Um, I think we can all agree, though, Origins had another fantastic year. And oh, yeah. Yes. Getting a behind-the-scenes tour gave us a more knowledgeable kind of point on it. There was a lot of things that I didn't even know uh, about, like her the – the first room her like her her crimes are written on a paper right there and stuff and I'm mm-hmm. like, that's cool oh yeah they tell you that's the best part about the yeah. behind, behind the fog the behind the fog is like one of the best things you could do as a fan oh, as 100%. a scary farm fan oh yeah because yeah. if you're in you know any haunter would love it they want to oh, yeah. see the behind the scenes because how often do you get to walk through these mazes without somebody going hey keep going keep going keep yeah going, keep going. And, and, really and all the lights are in. off you know, the lights are on for once and you're like wow i could actually see yeah. take in the the artistry you know. the details because yeah. i'm stuff. sure i don't know if you did but i peek behind curtains all the time like oh that's yeah. how it's done yeah. you know like to see how like oh yeah see they build the maze I'll, like i'll do i'll give I'll like give the you can walk around knock on or anything just to knock out how solid is this <laughs> yeah right? what is this yeah right <laughs> like, Ooh, okay like uh, barry was like i don't like being in the back i'm like i'm fine i'm looking at everything yeah, <laughs> because it kind of got a little crowded for us but it was okay yeah. I was having a good time. Yeah, I'm that, I'm that guy in the maze. Like, what is this made out of? Oh, this is plastic. Wow, that's that's heavy. Oh yeah, right you like when you really look at it, you're like, yeah. wow. You know, when the lights are off and everything, and there's different. some fog. Yeah. You know, it's it crazy. Is, it is crazy. But origin. Watch all your your viewers are gonna comment in the comment section. Mary didn't know the name of the Underlord or Overlord. <laughs> Every single person is gonna be like, shame on Knots Network. I don't even shame remember on your cow. that guy. I went. Tw- he was 2011, wasn't he? Yeah, I wasn't thought, he there 2011? I didn't I was, even remember. Yeah, that. I, was, I remember just going through Doll, Doll Factory like a hundred million times because they were like, "Hey, this is its last year." I was like, oh, "No, Got this it. thing's great." <laughs> Gotta go. And then while you were doing that, I was just walking around Carnival like a fool. Where's Bobo's? Where's oh, Uncle? Bo- I literally it. was walking around Carnival for 20 to 30 minutes trying to find Uncle Bobo's. That day. <laughs> I couldn't find it for the life of me, and then I kept asking clowns. Where is uh, it? Clowns, the worst <laughs> people to ask. <laughs> and then 
I kept, I kept sending me on wild goose chases. I know. They're like, guys, I'm running out of light. Our bat, our lights are dying. I, I had a. Tim's disappearing. Uh, oh man, uh, <laughs> I, I also enjoyed. Of course, you got the return of Waxworks and and mm-hmm. Depth back there as well. Waxworks. I love oh. both mazes. Beautiful. I love that Waxworks is such. It's an homage to House of Wax with Vincent Price. Yes. Like that's an inspiration, and I love the whole concept of going through a, a wax museum because those things can are freaky looking anyways. And why not amp up the freakiness and the horror with a cool backstory of this demented um, art waxwork artist, the artist, the guy. Yeah. The, the curator. curator. There you go. Thank you, the curator, and just it's it, that's an amazing, incredible maze. And depths, I love just like ooh the sea theme. It's just like the ocean, so scary, and it's just like that. I love the kraken, the the, kraken. the kraken guy. Yes, I like. What a great epic piece, like an epic show piece in yes. there. And it's like ooh, and then the ship going left and right. And it's like yeah, the shark. Yes, Bruce, Bruce the Shark. The shark. Yes, there. that whole maze is just fun. Oh, it's yeah. a fun maze. Yeah, I love yes. the set design for that. It's so beautiful. Um, oh, yeah. More cookbook stuff with the laser waters, you know. That's, oh, yes, that's a, that's totally. Book classic right there. Stamped of approval in the Bible, you know. Um, Waxworks, fantastic. I mean, just to be in that. You know, and so especially going through Waxworks, it gives me, I don't know if you guys remember, down the street, Movie Land mm-hmm. Wax Museum when it was there back Yes. Then. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That's what gives me reminiscence of every time I go through. I'm like, Movie Land Wax Museum, such good memories. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. There used to be a Ripley's Believe It or Not down the street, too. I remember that. I do yeah. remember that. It was right across the street. I went through it once. I went through it and once. Then now, now I think it's a restaurant now, I think. I think it's a it? Korean barbecue or something. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, how did they turn that place into a restaurant? I know. Because it was weird when you went through it. Yeah. You went through the one, though, in L.A., though. So yes, in L.A. They're, yeah, they're yeah. similar like that where you walk. Like, just walking through them is an adventure. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is, for real. So. Yeah, that I mean those mazes fan favorites too. I mean those those are those are some of my favorites as well. Um, dark entities. Now here's my here's my problem with dark entities. This is something I've been trying to advocate on the channel for for many. Suck years. it to me. I'm ready for it. What's your problem with a dark entity tease? I feel like the maze would perform so much better if you gave it the special ops treatment. I've heard multiple oh, people say this. True. I've heard multiple people the say guns? this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one makes more sense having the guns. Yeah. I mean, this totally will jump from, you know, what we're going to talk about, though, with Bloodline. But that, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes more sense. You're in space. It's supposed to be futuristic. I mean, and why not be Ripley? You know, I was going to say, an I mean, I'm an why alien not fan? be Ripley? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I need, I need to have yeah. some Ripley, you know? like Right? Like, that's, I mean, I like dark entities. I don't, I think it's because this whole space concept creeps me out. Yeah. Like, you know, bad things happening in space. I've watched plenty of those sci fi Dark horrors. entities is a great maze. So, it's I a think great it's great. Oh, it's maze. fantastic. Awesome amazing it's it's a great it, it really scares the shit out of me because those little creatures that you see at the end like on the roofs and shit like i i get i i freak out over that i mean and then the puppets i love the puppets yeah, the, the ones that oh, go yeah, yeah there's I, I there's lots of out. little things there yeah but <laughs> I, I think giving it the the special ops treatment would really immerse you in a movie like alien or like predator you know what i mean like yeah you're, that'd you're be there, cool you know I mean, I already feel like John Wick when I have one of those guns in my hand, but you know, <laughs> I, I want to feel like Ripley going to kill aliens. I've yes, Ripley. Yes. Yeah. I've killed zombies. I've had my, I had that out of the way. I've done vampires now. That you know. That, Let's start that, shooting some aliens. Some aliens <laughs> yes, that's a good idea, really. That's my oh, only critique man. about that maze. That should, that's, that's all I should get. Then it would be smart to just shift the technology of. That's at Bloodline over to. Yeah, especially if Dark Entities is going to get it last shift year. It over just there. It, yeah, it just it shift it over, over there for next year. Like yeah. that, that I would do that if I was. And schooled. it would up the line with that maze because I always feel bad the line. That maze never has a line. <laughs> yeah, that, so I think it's hard maze. for people to tell where it is, too. I know. <laughs> it's like the Uncle Bobo situation with me. Where is um, this maze? They, prob- <laughs> they probably should have. I mean, I'm not going to 
because I get it. Like they shift how they do entrances. So, like sometimes that warehouse, you would go through the front side of it. Right. And, like, for dark entities, they're having you go through the back side of it this yeah. time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they kind of shift entrances and exits sometimes on those mesas. So yeah, even depths is like that now. The entrance is in the back instead of the front. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Um. All right. We ready to talk about the last two, the new ones of of twenty twenty two. I'm go. ready. Yes. <laughs> let's let's kick it off with Bloodline 1842. Okay. First off, oh, no. uh, Tim's like, oh no, she's gonna here we go. She's gonna real go off. Okay. Real talk. You know how you said that people didn't understand the storyline of Grimoire and that and other people have told me Grimoire has too much story. I feel like that opinion's flipped with bloodline because the thing is me being a horror fan and a fan of like halloween and all that stuff i'm obsessed with you know witches and like vampires and like all so i know basic lore of witches vampires and all that stuff and so with the basic knowledge of what a witch's grimoire is going in the grimoire and seeing the trailer i I felt like I had a great grasp on what I was going to experience for that maze. I'm like, okay, that grimoire, because it is told in folklore that when you're, when you open a witch's grimoire, that is not your grimoire, but it belongs to someone and it, the, the book doesn't belong to you and you open it up, then bad things happen to you. When you open up a witch's grimoire, that's not yours. Mary, you, and just, so, you just answered a lot of people's questions. I hope you know that right now. You just answered a, a big thing for people right now about grimoire. That makes so much sense now. Like Bad I, things I, happen I, to I you. I personally, on, I'm being 100% real. I did not know that. I well, because I I'm obsessed, and it, it is just and like I love monsters, monsters. I, I love folklore, now. and yes, yeah. and with witches especially. I it, just fun fact for you: I've studied witchcraft in college, nice. like the anthropology of it, the yeah. study of it, the deep dive on like how different cultures practice it and everything. And right. that was one of the big things. It's when you open another witch's grimoire that is not yours, then bad things will happen to you but it, that's the basics of it right of what exactly you have to it open depends and read on it or just opening it like taking another witch's grimoire that is not yours it's opening like, it and reading it yeah. and going ooh like that's like, always that, a thing, that will you know? curse Don't you read from like evil like dead certain- like you know, evil yeah dead. evil dead evil the dead mummy the best example yes. the mummy yeah. yes two great exactly mummies. like think of yeah. like the best thing with grimoire if you're talking to somebody and you, you just want to give a basic like an id idea of like how to explain it evil dead yeah that's, that's what, what i always tell like, people I'm like, evil. This, I'm like this is this is evil dead meets the twilight zone yes yeah that's what i was thinking but too. it i love how i i love how scary farm they do their research bef- because when you go into any of these mazes they it obeys the basic laws of each monster if that makes sense right yes yeah. but bloodline here we go so i felt like so bloodline 1984 is that correct 1842 thank you um i felt like that actually had too much storyline like okay so we're with good vampires fighting bad vampires but in the maze we have to figure out who the good and who the bad vampires are. No, and it's like, it, and then, it, no, it, it, it comes from the dark. It comes from the, the dark. Shoot for the heart. <laughs> I did not hear him say that the first time around. I was like, oh, oh. okay. But even then, I, I'm like, wait, I shot somebody in the dark. If they get too close to you, though, it's like, <laughs> over. I'm, I'm like, like, oh, man. If I if I shot you and you're a good guy, that's on you, bro. You got too close. I know, right? <laughs> you got too close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? You're like, hey, get away from me. <laughs> and then I went in with my food one time i got the garlic oh <laughs> that's right <laughs> i'm i'm bad okay. vampire lore man that's the vampire, vampire lore. lore anyways so going into that maze i felt like that's a that like it's a great maze oh yeah it's a great it's not i'm not saying oh it's a bad maze uh, that's not what i'm saying i just felt like it grim uh, Bloodline had so much going on and in order to appreciate 
all the details and everything, I felt like that it needs to be an upcharge maze, like trapped, or they need to do a system where like in the first year of um, special ops infected, where you go and run and get your ticketing for your reservation for your group because in bloodline they had you stop do full complete stops throughout the maze too many times and then if you are not with the group like tightly with the group then you will miss important show scenes including the finale right and i feel like that could be avoided if it was a specially ticketed upcharge experience interesting that that is the only problem i have with bloodline additionally they built up in that maze and there's so much details looking up and so you're constantly having to look down shoot the vampires and then you have the possibility of missing the train that's up the vampires that are up that's just another like two cents for me but that's hmm. about it the maze looks beautiful the the storyline's a little convoluted and then just if they put more lighting upwards on all the sets and details that are built up then that would be a great addition for next year and also possibly making it an upcharge experience so people can have that full long experience and not miss anything because i feel like there's too many opportunities to miss it and plus having all those full stops in the maze it backs up the line the flow through you don't have that flow through that you need whereas in grim grim grimoire you only have the first full stop one time at the beginning for that show scene and then that's it and then you walk through like a normal maze scary farm is too big of an event there's too many there's a lot of guests to go through that maze in one night and i feel like having so many full stops in one maze is not a good thing i agree um i would say my biggest issue with bloodline as much as it gave me a a dream come true to be like blade one night yeah uh, ah, yes i have to say my biggest issue with that maze are the guns themselves yeah i i wasn't into the guns at all i now, mean don't get me wrong problem... yeah it was great yes and it brought my my blade fantasies to life yes yes you know i've watched I mean? blade i'm like it's a good it's a vampire getting rid of bad vampires yeah. it's like hilarious and it, like um that's awesome but, but you're right the guns with me but how the can guns, you tell the good vampires and the bad well, vampires well, no like with me the guns kind of takes away a lot when they're inside mazes like because this same problem um at special ops we didn't go through it too, when they made it a maze i don't remember going through it too much because the line was always long and you're they're making you run through it so you practically miss a lot of the stuff sitting around right and it kind of felt like that like i think it's just the whole oh video game mentality i got a gun i want to uh, boom, boom, boom. oh there's yep. something that's moving boom 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 so you're not really looking at everything as much and i think that's why like it took four times until i finally saw the train because I, and, I, and he missed things. the finale in the first his keep, first time going through he missed the finale you keep talking about this train i have that shows you how i i went to the maze i think twice because the line was see it took like but here's the it thing the, the train is shrouded it. in dark shrouded well, they had a in light darkness. on it though it's like and they I think, need a light on it i think they it. added the light they needed a light on it. it they need a they need to put more lights upwards because I they mean, built like i said they built for that maze they built up, up. they built uh, up and and there's a lot of details built they built up which is a great thing i love having more details in a maze but you need more lighting if you want people to look up yeah i i just i think the guns like you can go without them and it could still be a game you might have to throw the maze re back on the on the on the on the board again to to, to kind of adjust it to yeah the guns um to make it more of a storyline for guests to walk through and you're kind of walking through this historical battle between these vampire tribes that have been around for 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 many decades and whatnot um but it, it's i i think 
in order for me to get the entire experience of this maze to really look around at details and stuff, I'd feel better if I could flow through as a maze rather than oh, shooting around with vampires and stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's, like you guys said, there's so much detail that is missed. And that's I think a lot of that has to do with because you have the gun, too. Oh, yeah. You're focusing on people kill, shooting people rather than looking at the details of the maze. And that's what sucks is they've done so much there. We've gotten to see two rooms without with the lights on and you're just like, wow, you know, if like, and then when you, everything's on in action, you think to yourself, wow, they kind of just shoved us through there. And also again, you're holding the gun and you're thinking you're like, yeah, shoot, shoot, shoot. You know, you're, I'm in video game mode all of oh, a sudden, yeah. you know? And then, um, I don't mind, like, I don't mind that there's theatricals and mazes. It's just, if you're going to do that, put a sound system in there and mic them up because 99% yes, of up. the time, I cannot hear a word they are saying. Unless I get that bar scene, unless you were right in front of the bartender. Yeah, you can't know. hear him. Nope. It's like, and I thought I could have swore I saw a mic on him, but the, clearly that wasn't anything because yeah. not, I couldn't hear it projected. So I, I just, I, I, I was in the back of that the, the first time, the opening night we went through it. And I, like I said, unless you were in the front of the bar, you could not hear the bartender in the back. And, it was and then like, also yeah, in when you're yeah. in that scene with with the the weapons master, right. he talks to and it's like, yeah, he talks very, too, and you can't hear him that much so loud. I, I think I remember telling my buddy I had a buddy that was behind the scenes working and stuff. And I remember telling him, you might want to tell him that, like, maybe. To, just turn down bloodline a little bit just so these guys can talk in between scenes. you know you know i remember this one maze i was working i had to guide people into like four different it was like a uh in between area and i had to guide them to four areas and i'm not the loudest person and i would scream on top of my lungs they had like a pa speaker right above me just blasting music and i, I would tell the tech guy i'm like hey man i am trying so hard to scream but i'm gonna lose my voice i'm like these people keep saying what what? what and i'm like dude it's terrible <laughs> what what <laughs> i know man but other than that i i think this maze overall uh obviously going into year two there's a lot of things that they got to try to figure out to kind of improvement and and to tell a solid story but also um move people through it and yeah go keep the guns um so there is some things that need to be improved but most of the maze for me was just a fun time yeah same I, I once i get that gun i get into that video game mode i'm just like boom, 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 boom. i only get the gun once and then every single time i went through i'm like no gun please no gun please <laughs> That's a way they'll, they'll kill you i'm fine yeah. with dying i will i've if barnabas collins bite me <laughs> you know i'm always telling dracula at, at, at universal studios hollywood bite me it's like I mean, you know i i, I can't not, I, I, I can't go no loss here I, i'm a little too loyal to this guy right here ah. I'm a little too loyal so. <laughs> i go more mad scientist than i do vampire that's cool yeah so yeah bottom line bloodline it was like if i were to rank all the mazes like all of them bloodline would be i like it's a great maze but it's not the greatest maze of this year i think it's cool it's just the guns kind of take away from it that's just me though a lot of people have been saying that though i think yeah. get rid of the guns and, you know you'll have a, you'll be able to look at stuff more 100 mm -hmm. but i get it those guns <laughs> they've been around for almost half a de over half a decade i think now at this point well, what do you guys think about the full stops like almost three to four full stops in the maze it was itself. interesting because in the first weekend that was a thing and then i remember they got rid of it, they, got rid of it. they just kept flowing people through because they knew it was that's yeah. good so, that's usually what ends up happening they yeah. the idea is there and then they try it and if it doesn't work there's a backup which yeah. is why that's i probably... love going opening night and then going in like middle of the season yeah exactly because then that's probably why they don't even bother micing them up because they probably think ah we're not gonna get them flowing through. Or, yeah i was like we'll try this opening weekend and then after that f it just get them going through <laughs> i was very shocked that grimoire stuck around but i think oh with it was, the it was, uh it was yeah because that was always a opening, long way too yeah. but you were right mary i think they cut it up long. a little bit actually they did cut it up a little bit did they <laughs> The Grimoire. Are we gonna? Are the we gonna? Are we gonna up. jump to Grimoire? We're jumping to Grimoire. <laughs> Grimoire. 
Trip, I okay, yeah, Trip I'm Moore pretty so sure. Much. Oh, yeah, I actually I love enjoyed Trip it Moore. a lot more than Bloodline. Way more. A million times more than blue. I loved, I loved Grim. I, I rave, I will rave and rave about Grimoire. And I know there's people, like you said, people were like, oh, that's too complicated of a story. No, it's not. If you like know the basics, like it's a, basically an evil book. And these people open the evil book and the evil comes out. That's that. And you're going through the where this book has gone through in time yes and that's that's it like and it's really cool that it takes us through different time periods with the book and it's so the style the artistic style in each scene is so amazing i love the story the style the scares everything <laughs> about grimoire was top notch i just top not remember walking through this maze um i got to i had the uh, fortunate opportunity to attend employee preview night and he is. i remember walking through this maze and after walking out i was like my hopes and dreams for a twilight zone maze to be completed at halloween horror nights just came true with grimoire yes it's amazing i was like it's an amazing maze from the time you the first room you walk in you know just walking through this maze and you you see these people they're 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 reading from the book they're around a campfire they're at this camp um and we're in the 80s and then for everything to go haywire and then you walking through a tent and ending up in this whole other reality of like where the grimoire went you're going you're seeing where the past of this book went you're seeing it's in black and white which is just mind blowing of its own Oh, and if I not to interrupt you, but if you've noticed the uh, laser lines, the laser. that's the that's the page change, I yes. believe, or the time changing. Yes. That's what that's supposed to represent, I believe. And yeah. I, I, I just I want to praise knots because yes, that was easily the greatest thing I've ever seen. Like it, it was just just to really immerse you into the book and into the the history of this book. And we go back into black and white and we're seeing this evil kind of like mom nanny figure trying to put her kid to bed and whatnot. And j them just being scared of her and stuff. That was terrifying. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, yes. You got the kids scratching the bed underneath and the kid jumping out of the closet. It's it's something. It's terrifying. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's I terrifying. think I agree with you. Grimoire was such a it, it is a brilliant maze and i think that i i just loved it it's beautiful yes. i think it's top it it's definitely so top cool. three mazes for this year yeah for I, me i i really Dark enjoyed Ride, how number one uh oh, then grimoires number two for me and then number three it's a tie between origins and mesmer interesting that's good. That's my top three. I've I've been saying across the board my all time favorite maze for every haunt that I've been to this year was Grimoire. And congratulations yeah. to Grimoire because they won Maze of the Year for twenty twenty two. Yes, it's well deserved. It's, it's deserved. a brilliant maze. I, I really that. enjoyed that. A one. perfect maze. One of my one of my good friends uh, was actually the manager for that maze, so I, I I had a phone call with him the other day and just straight up told him like, dude, I could have told you right before the season started that that was gonna win Maze of the Year. Because, oh yeah because you and your cast just you know how to motivate cast and you really know how to let the cast be the characters and, and embrace yes. the characters and, and be themselves and stuff and and the cast did an amazing job um that maze went through so much technical difficulties especially on rainy nights but they 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 powered through it and still won maze of the year so much deserved for grimoire for that awesome excellent That's great. i love hearing that they everybody just slayed that maze oh we did say that we did we were talking about this earlier um they did shorten up the opening a little bit yeah just a little just bit. a little bit yeah, yeah. just a little bit because i was watching um our uh what's it called our first night flow through and then our we went we went again i did film the beginning again because i enjoyed that the whole maze i'm like i like this part and everything when they read the book i'm like hey it seems a little shorter I'm like i think they cut it up a little bit so they can get people through Time. faster yeah. you know and it took us a while to realize that you're starting off in in the tree house and then you go down into towards the campsite and yeah. i really love how this maze connects with the show from last year the future tron did you watch future tronics i didn't get a chance to 
Me neither. Mary got to see it. I know. I got the full Futuretronics experience. It was so great. It You walk in, it's like the 80s. It's like, did you hear about Futuretronics? Yeah. Uh, and then did you know at the very end of the maze, um, there's posters for Futuretronics? I seen that. I was like, that's a cool yeah. little Easter egg. And they're playing all the 80s music and stuff. We that Yes. Was, that was actually where we hid the night that it rained super hard. And they were pulling people off the streets. So we were hiding under there because um, it was dry. And they're playing 80s music. So why not? Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. I, it's brilliant how they're connecting the show with the maze and how it's going to become a bigger thing next year. Yeah. How there's Easter eggs and already hints about what's going to happen for next year. Yeah, I'm excited. I really am. Me too. And, and we have to show some love to the final scare zone that we didn't get to talk about, Forsaken Lake. Ooh, I love Forsaken Lake. Beautiful design. That song, the song, the song is one of my favorite haunt, so haunt songs, like haunted attraction songs of yeah. all time. But that version, I'm like, I always ask everyone, who's the singer? I need to know who the singer is. And nobody knows who it is. One person said, it's John Cook. I'm like, that's not John Cook. I mean, he Do you has think a, it's John Cook singing? He's got a history. He's got a band. He does have a band. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like his voice, though. It, it, he, I mean, I... I, I have I, you heard his music? I have heard his music, but I can tell you this. I've also heard music from a lot of metal artists in the past that sound one way when they sing with their band and a whole other way when they sing classical oh, music. It's possible. That song, that, that song is just... I love it. Chef's Kisses. That song is everything to me. Like I and then that sh and then the the procession it's incredible so that blows my mind and then the the show aspect is like ah I love Forsaken Lake no oh, and and the and the style of what they're wearing oh, yeah. the the aesthetics the look and then the feel. wind of Ooh. yeah I I I I, I absolutely love this song. I love the mausoleums and yeah. the the crypts it's just it's, and was and it then, me or did it seem like there were they had more people working there this year there too and they I, did and that made they me very did. happy. They did. I think I felt like the zone was also, they also larger. Moved it yeah. More by like the dip past the dip and dots. Yes, food, past I the think. dip that yes, those monsters got those yeah. dip and dots. They went all yeah. the way by there now. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh cool, it's bigger now. Yeah. That's awesome. That is cool. Oh my god, what an what an incredible season we had. Yes. yes. I mean, 49 was a good one. It really was. Yes. Pop it up. Pop it up. Carnival Pop it task, up. man. Yes. yes. I really oh enjoyed the carnival show. I mean, if if they don't do the hanging, at least hope that comes back. Yeah. That was really cool. Pop it up. Always a fun time, too. It's just oh, really yeah. Odd. Yeah. No, but carnival grotesque. I mean, I was blown away by that. Yeah, I honestly had no idea what it was. I yeah. just went over there without and um, somebody I know um, who's a follower was working was one of the stage hands came over and went, Oh, you're going to love this. I'm like, is this like a real, sh like a show show? And she's like, yeah, it's 30 minutes. And I'm like, Oh, cool. Cause I thought like, cause the year before they just had little quick sideshow acts yeah. and then a band would come out. So that's what I kind of thought, but I looked around like, well, there's no band or drums and or anything. So if you guys, <laughs> if you guys saw the audiences every single night, I swear it was packed every single night, yes. every single yes. show. Yes. Like so, they did something right with that show. It was good. Oh it yeah. Was fun. Um, I I will say the one thing that blew me away this year, uh, was the ending to the Calico Mine Ride. Did, oh, like, oh, the candy. Yeah. Like the end of it. Yeah. Like, um, I don't know. Did we? Did it not work for us or something? Probably or? not. Because I'm like, like I don't remember. Wait, wait, did you get? <laughs> Okay, so I, I went on during Scary Farm. Um, we I, did too. I, I, uh, I, and one of the nights we went, you know, you, you're you hearing the story. Okay, yeah. You're hearing the story about, like, the, the you know, she's turning everything to candy, but something's – you hear it too. If you pay attention to the background, you hear people going, but something's not right about her. She seems evil. And I'm yes. like, well, how evil can you be? You're turning shit to candy. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, so by the end of the, by the actual final scene of it, you, you, you finally introduced to the, this candy fairy or whatnot. And those yes. kids, those kids are asking, um, or like coming up and thanking her and stuff. And then she just goes full blown evil, like <laughs> turns the kid into candy and straight up eats him. I'm like, Oh man, where did the hell did this come from? I was like, <laughs> I'm riding this entire ride. I didn't know. I, I was not expecting that. Like I was just like. 
what a shift in a tone that got like yeah that wasn't really the ending though that was like the middle where the stalactites were it's... right yeah that was oh, yeah. okay he's talking about oh, the, the... with the tent and then the shadows and the it's a candy oh, yeah, like yeah, where yeah, she's yeah. like going just, crazy about that, candy that was just it was insane though i was like it was um so so did that kind of just hit back to like maybe them doing a, a bringing that back for the 50th having characters again oh that would be cool that would be cool i mean they did it not too long ago they just have to be tethered or whatever yeah but I, I i remember that and, and going through that on 2008 and, and just just remember loving that same thing with the log ride i mean that was mm. yes those are the two things that actually made not scary farm too was those two attractions being the, yeah that's I, another song I really love, the the log ride scary farm song, yeah. the Halloween hoot nanny dude. Do, do, yeah, do, the, do, the mine do, ride do. getting an overlay is one of the coolest things mm -hmm. that they could do there. I mean, the whole glory hole filled with fog and yeah. you know, it's just like and like you would go through like areas with fog everywhere and you'd just be like, oh man, something's gonna get me because you can't move. Yeah, like that's what's scary about that. You yeah. cannot move. You are yeah. stuck where you are so if something's gonna get you no matter what yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent i uh i'm excited to see what's to come for the 50th i really me am. too it's gonna be i'm beyond big, excited it's gonna be a big I'm, celebration i'm dying with this it's, i'm dying with excitement yes it's excitement. gonna be so good there's a lot of build up going into the uh to the 50th it seems like there's a lot of setup going into the 50th oh yeah um and I can't wait to see how people improve more because uh, they they always do a, they always give one hundred and ten percent and they come back every year having new things in their in their arsenal and their and their things they've been thinking about all year long. So I always like to see what people come up with next, um, and I can't wait to just celebrate with everyone. The same time. it's gonna be a, a wonderful celebration it's gonna be great. i'm gonna cry i'm gonna be like oh no scary bar one big party <laughs> 50 years of fears right there man there's your slogan knots you can have that just hook, yeah. it, up, hook, it, hook it up with the annual pass for the season and we're good years of fears um mary tim thank you guys so much you guys are incredible at what you guys do out there. And, oh, thank you. And I, I, I tune in every every week to see what you guys have new. Um, I know a bunch of your fans continue to love you guys. I hear nothing but Aww. great things about you. Um, so I am just incredibly honored. Maybe we'll start a yearly tradition where we review knots every single year. If you guys are, are willing to do it, I, I oh, oh, we would totally, love that. This was totally. such a hoot. Yeah. I have love hoots. talking. We can talk forever. I'm yeah. always down to talk Lots about Scary, scary Farm. farm. Yeah, <laughs> I no. love Scary Farm so much. Even it's, in mid-November, we're still reminiscing about the, the, the amazing event though that is not Scary Farm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. And, and then and we were there today and like it's crazy because you know when we went last it was right before halloween and they had all their spooky stuff up and then now like today like christmas is everywhere oh everywhere. yeah it's it's amazing how fast they turn that turn park around and, yeah you're I mean, just like ah <laughs> between them and disney man they're just like that it's like halloween, oh yeah it starts getting down that night you know and and, and oh yeah it's already coming out so I mean, geez, they start putting up the Christmas lights in Ghost Town during Scary yeah, Farm. Yeah. Which is okay. like not a I'm like, nobody could tell at night. So, you know, as long as they're not on. Yeah. <laughs> and then did you did you watch our spooky farm video? Look, there's Christmas lights. Yeah, yeah. No, How I, dare I, they? I, I, they're I, like, I, oh <laughs> I remember he and it's funny you brought that because I was watching the video and you you specifically said, Yeah, when you when there's fog and everything, even the freaking the fake snow machines and whatnot, like yeah, you you're like nobody see, goes see yeah, those. <laughs> no one's gonna see those at night because we're not looking up. We're looking. We're barely. We can barely see through Fog Alley. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but you guys, thank you so much for being the people that you guys are on YouTube. I mean, you guys are Aww. a great source to, for people to watch as far as as theme parks goes. As far as getting the need to know knots news, you guys are the ones to cover it. And I'm. Uh, it's a pleasure to know you people, and it's a pleasure to uh, work with you guys and and continue to uh, to grow with you guys. So. Oh, thank, oh, you, thank so you so much. The it's pleasure such an is honor. ours. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I uh for those who don't know, Knots Network, they they've been doing it for some time now and and they are they are key players in the game and they they're key key pieces of the chessboard and without them um 
I don't think YouTube would be the same. I really don't. Aww. Aww. I'm face. melting <laughs> my heart, really my don't. icicle heart. I really don't. And this was a lot of fun. So uh, let's let's see what the 50th. I, I, we're going to have a lot to say about the 50th next year. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. Um, Do you have any other theories, like last minute theories about the 50th? I would say. Because I really liked, I don't remember who exactly said it in, in our little group, but earlier in the podcast, someone said they bring back like the key icons, like Green Witch and then Conductor. Oh, I thought it'd and be then, cool if they bring a couple icons. Yeah, back. Tim, the icons Tim, back. He yeah. Said some stuff and then I said yeah. some stuff. And, uh, About the hanging, like, but, but without Sarah the Sarah Marshall culture. definitely yeah, has yeah. to come back. Sarah Marshall. The Green Witch is the ultimate. She's the I'm icon. talking. I'm talking classic green face, black costume. Yes. Yes. That's iconic right there. Yes. So I, I don't know. I mean, who's to say we can theorize, we can think, and it's a lot of fun to do so, but only time will tell when those gates reopen oh, yeah. and the fog rolls on in. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And may I ask you one last question? Of course. Okay. So on every podcast we, we guest on, I ask this of every podcaster. So... <laughs> I have done some research and some polls in the past about horror, Halloween, and haunted attractions. In our community, usually people have a different combination of their interests. Like there's some people who work Scary Farm that just love Scary Farm, mm -hmm. and but they, they don't like horror movies. Or there's some people who love Halloween, but they don't care for haunted attractions or horror movies. And then there's some people who love horror, but haunted attractions are just way too much for them. And they love Halloween. So what's your combo? This is a good one because the way I look at Halloween and horror for me is more of a lifestyle. I, I, I love I love horror movies. I love anything to do with horror. The idea of, of and the and the science behind horror as far as of mm -hmm. getting scared and, and how they actually say it's good for you to get a little bit of an adrenaline yes. rush during it. That's always the best part of any anybody watching any horror movie is the adrenaline rush you have watching that film on the theater with the loudspeakers, dark room for the first time. And not knowing what's gonna happen. I mean, it's 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 the best feeling in the world when you watch any new horror movie, and you just don't know what's gonna happen. I just recently watched Barbarian with my uh, girlfriend for the first time, and I want to see that. I was blown away. If you guys have HBO Max, it's on HBO Max. Yes, oh, it's we'll, on my we'll list. Add that on the list. Yeah. Yeah. It's on it's, my list. It it, it it literally took. A, I kid you not. It's gonna take you one direction, and you think it's gonna go that direction, and literally it's gonna go like this. That's what everybody's oh. saying, I and I'm Just so excited to watch cool. it. You're gonna think one person's the villain, and then you're gonna be like, "Wait, what?" Like, yeah, that's the plot twist, though. It, it's just, it's, it's a mind blown. Psychological horror is just always. I mean, I love psychological horror. Halloween for me is is just a lifestyle. I mean, I, I, I love celebrating. If you, if you look in this, this is what I call the studio right here. Um, Right in front of me, actually, are a bunch of horror and Halloween Funko Pops that I have collected. It's like a oh, that's going. cool. Um, I have. We got all the Funko Pops right here, right yeah. beside us. <laughs> I mean, I got I got Hall of Shadows posters. I got my Misfits Freddy Krueger poster. Um, you know, I got I got a lot of horror memorabilia back there. I actually have a a Freddy Krueger claw that is fitted to Robert England's hand. So, um, I mean, I'm just a big collector of all things stuff. But Halloween for me is is the one holiday a year that i actually enjoy more than any um it's just a fun time for me it's it's an it's a it's a it's a pleasure and it's just it's great to go to these events and with halloween comes the amazing uh haunt season that i love to do every single year um you guys know this as much as i do because i actually saw you guys at a lot of events this year yes there's a lot to do in southern california um they, there's a lot of theme parks there's a lot of independent haunts a lot of home haunts um a lot of displays and whatnot uh and different types of events for fa uh, family and, and just people over the age of 18 people that can handle things and whatnot there's something for everyone out there and that's what i love about haunt season is there's so much to do in california that there's just not enough time to do it 
Yes. So oh my goodness. You got to really pick and choose what events you really want to go to that you've been going to for many years and you want to keep going. And then you got to choose some events that you really want to check out that you've never been to, but you've heard really. It's good. so yes. hard when there's so much. Yeah. It you feels know? like, yeah, every year we're like, okay, we're going to do our major ones. And then it's like, okay, what do you want to try this year? You know, what do you want to not do this year? And then it's, you know, it's, yeah, you do. It's, it's like the TikTok I made. It's a no sleep. Bus, bus, another club. Another, but like we, we didn't get to do every single haunt. Yeah. We, we, I always post, we we're going to gonna do. do all these haunts. And yeah. then it's like, there was at least and, uh, yeah. three of them that we didn't get to do. Or and four. then once there's a, a certain point in the season, we're like, oh, we can't do it all. You know, Listen, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll tell you the real truth behind it. There's so much to do and somewhere to go. But these gas prices are like, nice. Oh, oh, God, yes. Uh, like we, yes. we 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 have uh, we have flex fuel thank yeah. god yeah like i told i was telling my parents man if it wasn't for that flex fuel i wouldn't be going to all these haunts there's yeah. no way the gas yeah. is crazy like the, with the flex we would get a maybe a few visits to like like we would go to knots and then the next day maybe universal or something we would yeah. get a few trips out of a full tank so i was smart this season i uh and during the summer i bought gas cards so I, I went to Arco. I, I put $100 on a prepaid card, and I saved them for haunt season. I had two. Oh, that's so smart. I had two yeah. of them that I used specifically. So every week I'd put in about 30 to $50 of gas, and it's good to go. Totally. You almost need to start, like, saving now. Oh, yeah. Because the season just gets crazy. Like, there's yeah. so much to do. And then, yeah, the gas money. And then yeah. just, and then all the know. merchandise. It's merchandise. like, if you want merchandise. This year, yeah. horror night? The food, oh yes, the food. The like food. I gotta eat. Yes, <laughs> no. at horror at horror nights. When I saw the merchandise, I'm like, I want to buy everything. And for and at for, horror nights, for at, both I those like, theme parks, horror nights for me, a big donut is a must. Oh yeah. yes. yes. Oh, that was uh. We actually got for the first time. I realized they um because <laughs> I would always get the donuts somewhere else. I never would get them in the Simpson Land. Right. And I realized we went there one visit. And I was like, oh, they have maple, bacon, maple ones. Yeah. The, the big size. I'm like, I'm totally waiting in line one of the nights and getting one. I'm like, this is going to be a yearly thing now. Yeah. At HHN, I got to have the giant donut. <laughs> and, and then you go to Knott's and you got to have a funnel cake. That's yes. Oh, yeah. I did do that. Don't. Yeah. It's a sin if you don't. Like, I, I, every Knott's trip that I did this year, funnel cake. <laughs> yes. Nice. But let me tell you something from my personal observation. Yes. Six Flags has the best funnel cakes in Southern California. Six Flags' funnel cakes are really good. And, yes. They are. And, and what makes them more exclusive in that park is there's only one location that sells them. Exactly. Yes. So it's like you got to get it on the off season or something yeah. or get it at the weirdest hours because the line just it's yeah. like not, you, you just look at it and go, man, I've been in lines all day. I don't want to wait in line and for a funnel And speaking of cake. funnel cakes, at this hot season at Scary Farm, uh, cable car kitchen that's right outside the park. We went in to go get a funnel cake and they put all the candy on it. They I'm put, like, like the gummies. On it, yeah. It's like, ah. Yeah, that's that the best good. place to get uh, your funnel cakes yeah. at Scary Farm. Yeah. If you want to get them on the way out, just yeah. get them right there. Like, because nobody, it takes a while for people to realize that it's open. Yeah. And then they'll just, they'll just go, oh, road snack or whatever. Road know? snack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Start swarming it and stuff. We need the sugar for the road home. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, for those who want to keep up with you and who are not familiar with you, which I don't, if you're not familiar with them, have, have you been living under a rock? Because these guys, <laughs> they've been they've been killing at the game. For those who are not familiar with you, though, uh, where can they find you on social media and, and YouTube and whatnot? That's all good. You can got Knots Network on Knott's Instagram, Network. Facebook, in, YouTube, all like yeah, all this great. all the social media TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, yes. not, it's just Knots Network. That's the just easiest Network. way. Yeah, easiest yeah, we're way. we're on all. Of them. Oh, wait, we have a website too. Wait, but wait, that's... let's show everybody the logo, Tim. What? Tim, oh, the, the logo. The logo. The lo the there's the logo. Knots Network. The hunt season one. Hunt season one. Um, and so this year was our the tenth anniversary. Tim, show. show oh, uh, we have ten years, have a, 10 years. Oh, and 10 the years. amazing. It, the, our both of our logos, the Haunt Season logo and the regular logo, were designed by the amazing Jacob Larson. Oh, Jacob's a dear friend. You don't got to yes. tell me Jacob. I love me, Jake. I love me some Jacob. Yes. Good friend. Pirates Cave. <laughs> yes. I love Pirates yeah, Cave. Yeah, he created our logos this year. We're like, yes, you're amazing, <laughs> Jacob. He's very talented but, at what he does. But 
yeah, just everybody at Not Scary Farm. Everybody's just so talented, so amazing, and we're so grateful to experience all their talents from everybody from the crew who makes the mazes, the who work the day like the event, the bats, and then the um the monsters. Everybody just knocked it out of the park this year. It's a and great season. It's a great Scary season. Farm just makes my heart happy. I'm like ah, every time it comes around, I'm like yes, it's my I, I favorite time walk, of year. There was a couple nights I I saw you in Goring Twenties and just seeing the smile on your face. I'm like she looks like a very happy camper right now. <laughs> Some campers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so yeah, Knots Network across the board. Go check them out. Highly suggest it. You'll enjoy them. They got a lot of Christmas content coming your way. So oh yeah, That's thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. It was yes. such an honor being on your podcast. The final yes, question I have for you guys though, usually the hardest question for our guests. Okay, I'm ready for the hard. Give me the hard questions. <laughs> What's your favorite scary movie? You first, Ooh. Tim. Oh, that's you so first. Hard. You first. Oh no. Oh yes. My favorite scary movie. Hmm. Can I give a guess of what I think? What you're gonna say? No, I, not the sci-fi ones. Those are too. I was gonna say Jaws for you. Jaws. You love Jaws. He that's once good. watched Jaws for two months straight. Yeah, I had over it on. and over. That was the only thing on the TV. I'm like, oh, I haven't seen this in years. I just popped on. Like, oh, I'm never turning it off because <laughs> when you're when I grew up, it was you know. DVDs weren't very that common for me. So right. it was what if I saw it on TV, you know, yeah. or something like that. So Jaws just now awesome. having now having it owning up, you know, you're older and you're like, hey, I could own these now. And you're just like, I'm never gonna stop watching it. That's the same thing happened with me in Predator when I I think it was a Black Friday. I saw it for five bucks on Blu-ray and I was like, Oh my god, I haven't seen this forever i'm like i'm gonna watch it i just couldn't stop right there right i couldn't stop watching it and i love all the predators they yes. keep especially this. when him and, and him and dylan are locking oh, hands the, right oh, there the, the, yeah. the yeah. iconic the iconic shot that's probably one of my favorite the muscle predator. right there the muscle yeah. i'm just looking I, at that i'm like oh i don't have that but damn that's not look good i know every time you look at that <laughs> shot you're just like oh that shot's iconic I know. <laughs> that's a good but one but yeah God. that one jaws and predator are probably my favorite i would say more predator because yeah i like how they're just living their life it's a different kind of horror story they're just yeah. doing their thing they're going in thinking they're gonna um rescue somebody and then there's uh, what re in reality is an alien's attack is hunting them, predator is, to... is, is so ahead of its time i still have not had the opportunity to see prey yet i heard nothing but praise for it it's, oh it's good, good. Yeah. it's good, it's so and, good. And, I'm a, and i'm a big fan of predator i've always loved the design of and the look of the alien and 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 how smart they are and 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 just the 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 uh the background of, of who they are, you know, and that, they, just, they, just, they just hunt, you know? Yeah. Um, Prey is very good. You'll like, you'll like it. Yeah. Everyone said it's a great prequel to like when they first came to earth and whatnot like this. Yes. Really so. Because you know, it, it shows them how they look at things and they go, Hmm. Yeah. The you know, learning curve, and you know, everything. the learning curve with us and our yeah. planet and everything. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a good one. Yeah, I was great. Anything Predator. It's crazy because now Disney owns Predator. <laughs> I know. And they're still producing things. <laughs> I'm mean, like, hey, they're good. Like, if Disney doesn't want to throw it on Disney+, Plus, they're like, hey, we got Hulu. Let's throw it on Hulu. Exactly, right? They got Hulu. That's what, you know, I did not, when I worked, I worked at Disneyland years ago, and they, one of the things at orientation was they told you how much Disney actually owned yeah. as a company. And a I was lot. like, whoa, I had no idea. They're like, well, yeah, you know, we don't want to put Pulp Fiction on it. Uh, Walt Disney brand. Uh, I'd be like, I'd own it. Uh, I'd be like, oh, you know, you know, yeah, I, yeah, that's Disney, all right. And I was laughing at that. I was like, okay, that makes sense now. And Touchstone was one of their subdivisions and yeah. everything. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm like, it makes sense because you know, why would you want to just limit yourself to one audience? Yeah, and you could get Especially another with audience Disney with their billions and billions of dollars just buying out. Right. Like, it's like it's like they're it's just like, hey, let's buy this now. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, how much you want for it? I, I wouldn't be surprised I, if they buy out Amazon the next one, three years. I'm just saying. Oh, oh no. no. What now, happened to the monopoly laws? Speaking of the monopoly <laughs> laws, like I know nobody will know listening to this podcast will know this. Nope. Tim doesn't know this a lot. <laughs> like, I know. Nine, I'm very familiar with the monopoly laws. 99.99% of your audience probably won't know this, know but it's bit. really bad right now in the publishing industry. Like one publisher, major publishers trying to buy out another major publisher and shrinking the major publishing companies from like four down to three. 
But that's but, and then Stephen King came out and said this is going to wreck publishing. That's what kind of um, happens with certain things, though. But it's like where are the monopoly laws? Like I mean, where it, the also, monopoly it also laws? it also depends on how much how much they own and and how much they're they're gonna own. Like, Way too example. much. They keep buying and buying and buying out all the publishing companies. These yeah. big the the two major the major so, ones keep buying them all out. For example, th- with Disney though, the the monopoly laws are kind of already set in stone because Disney is already owning. They have the rights to everything Marvel, so they yeah. own Marvel. Yeah. They own all the rights to Lucasfilm's back catalog of films, which is Indiana Jones and Star Wars, just to name the popular ones. Yeah, the um, only things they can't do with Indiana Jones, though, is they can't distribute the those four movies. Paramount still yeah, Paramount has that has right. Rights, yeah. Like, and, yeah, but like, but Disney can make new movies. Yeah, though. Disney has the rights to make new movies and stuff and whatnot. So, um, and they also have the commercial rights to uh, legally license it for the for the for the parks. Um, okay. So they could do that. They own Star Wars. You know, Star Wars is another big yeah. franchise alone. That's crazy. That made yeah. so much money. That they when they bought it for four billion dollars uh, from George Lucas, they made that back within the first trilogy that they made. It's insane. yes, um, yes, they did. They, Everything they've done, they've made all that back. They just it's... bought out 20th Century Fox. Now they own the whole Fox catalog. Um, they uh, they own Hulu, they own ESPN, they own uh, all the ABC networks. Like, where are the monopoly laws? No, that's what I'm saying. If they, if they, if know they, who, they, you know who will never get rid of though? The who they'll never own is Spider Man. Sony will never get rid of nope. Spider Man. Got a good deal going with them, it's right? I, I mean, smart. why would they get rid of um, it if they can just work with them? You yeah. know, even the Hulk. I don't know how like Universal still owns the Hulk. They, they like have, I get, uh, I, the, the I, rights, I guess, and they just, it's they crazy, have, but it seems like every year it's getting closer and closer to the Hulk finally getting another solo movie. It's like, right. Uh, the rights only have to be there for so long. Exactly. Unless universal does something to make an, their own movie, but they're probably not going to. Um, okay. Mary. Now to tell you my favorite, your horror very scary movie. movie. I yes. didn't forget about my you. favorite. It's, no, no, it's okay. My favorite scary movie is The Munsters by Rob Zombie. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. Okay. I ain't gonna I lie. Though. I ain't gonna I lie. I ain't gonna lie. I actually enjoyed it. Not as much as the original series, but I yeah, thought it was a fun film. I enjoyed it. I think everybody was just too rough on the reviews on that. But honestly, my favorite scary. I'm gonna give you top three because this is this is how it's gonna go down. Number one. One. Number one, ch- the original Child's Play from 1988. I just rewatched that like a week ago, and I it's forgot such how a scary brilliant it film. Is. Like it's it's okay, it's brilliant on so many levels. A, the voodoo. Yeah. B, it's like Chucky is so smart. Yeah. He is very very smart. He's snarky. He's entertaining. He's evil. He's manipulative. The, the story is so psychologically scary. And then with that slasher element, it's not just a straight up slasher. Chucky is very smart. Oh, yeah. And I really, and I love how he plays around with the victims and like, and then like he plant, he, he has the thing. If you listen to his, like, um, there's on the anniversary DVD, he has his own commentary and he talks, of, he goes through it. Okay, so when you're, when you're going through a kill, you got to have a plan, a game plan. So you got to do this, this, That's this. And I think it's brilliant. And then with that original film, what I also greatly admire is the special effects. Oh. The, the How Chucky's a puppet and an animatronic. I Brilliant. Tom I Holland, love- Tom Holland was a genius. Oh, yes. And then also an, another film that Tom Holland made that I absolutely love is Fright, Fright Night, Night. for real. And then Rosemary's Baby is another one of my favorite horror really? movies of all time because it's genuinely terrifying. Man, if you think Christ. about that, it, it's not OK. No, there's so much more to Rosemary's Baby that makes it so much more terrifying. The very fact that her own husband sells her out without her knowing it. Like, come on, that's terrible. She's supposed to trust him. That's her husband. And it's like, and he's betraying her on the most horrific level possible. And that's more evil than the, like, arguably than the Antichrist part of the film and the Satanist. Him betraying her is the, and then the psychological, like, uh, what is it called? Um, when, when, When you try to convince somebody that, that, oh, no. Uh, what is it called? That it's a very popular word right now. 
Mani um, manipulating them? It's not manipulating. Uh, it, there's another word persuading. that's slang. Not persuading. Persuading. It's persuading. gaslighting. It's gaslighting. the ultimate gaslighting. He's gaslight. Oh, nothing's wrong. And then like, and then she's convinced that she's going crazy. Yeah. And then everybody's just in on it and against her. And it's just like, that is so terrifying. Like everyone's like out to get her, 100%. you know, and there's nowhere that she could go. And the very few people that she could trust suddenly just like, die or like something happens to them it's a genuinely terrifying film yeah. and then krampus i love krampus krampus is good good holiday film right there yeah that's, that's something we do every year on the nights horror here on december we do a live stream we'll watch along with uh with the fans and whatnot it's always oh fun. that's oh, brilliant that's cool. always fun that's how we get our christmas horror vibe into it so nice yeah well it's been an absolute pleasure. We're going to do this again really soon. I know we will. Of course. Yes! Just hit us up anytime. I'm yep. we're so down. We're doing it again. I can yes. tell you that. We'll do it again. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys this so much. Fun. Go check out Knots Network right now. Uh, links in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a new video. Follow and us give it a like. There. Give it a like. Give it a like. And leave subscribe. Some and, yep. Yes. Leave some comments down there. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Nights of Horror and across the board on Instagram and TikTok, The Nights of Horror. Uh, yeah, I'm, comment what your favorite Scary Farm maze is. Yes. What is your favorite? What was your favorite experience from uh, not Scary Farm? Whether it was a maze, a show, a specific moment on a ride, or a scare zone, you let us know down in the comments. What was your favorite part about Not Scary Farm 2022? And we would love to read them. I'm excited. Uh, for yes. the 50th, and we will be back with a vengeance. With a vengeance. So until then, we will be lurking in the fog, and we'll be waiting for you in the fog.